So this is our second addendum lecture, and what it's about is digital transformation. So we can start to get a little bit more technology into this class. Uh, you know what's coming up left. You have your final papers uh, in a couple of weeks. And in terms of what I'm looking for, you can write a standard paper analyzing a company about their strategy and everything like that. But then it becomes a book report. I want some of your insights into this paper. Tell me, why are they structured the way uh, they're built? I mean, this paper should have critique in it. And how do you think you can make this business better? And every business can be better. And uh, Or, if you do agree with their strategy, justify why you agree with their strategy. Uh, and so that's what I'm looking for in this paper. Yes, I want the background reporting of the, of the company, that you understand the strategy and everything else, but I want to see, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I also want to see uh, your insights into it. And I believe for you online students, uh, you've got your uh, quiz too next week. Uh, when we look at the basic building blocks of strategic management, what we see is that it feeds into just about everything else, and it also feeds into digital transformation. So today we're going to talk about the rationale. You know, why do you need to do digital transformation? What is the vision and mission of it? What's the background information, the landscape and the context, the strategy that uh, you need to formulate to take advantage of it? And finally, how do you execute? And the way you execute is through leadership. Uh, why do we develop technology? Let's start out with that one. And when you sit down and think about it, the reason why we develop technology is we want more of us. We want to produce, for example, I want to go faster. Well, that just means that I want to go faster than what my legs can do. Uh, I want to be stronger. I want to lift more things up. Uh, there's not enough of me. So computing, the brain, all of a sudden now we can duplicate a thousand of you to do the same thing. And so it makes our life easier. It solves our problems. It makes us more productive. And for some people, technology is just uh, playing around. It's just our own intellectual curiosity. So when we think about technology improving us, there's basically two parts to us. One is the external. Now you're talking about your five senses. And now because of uh, cheap sensors that can measure pressure, temperature, and everything else that you can, and actually other things that you can't do, uh, oh, it has totally changed our, uh, our world. And also there's the internal part of us, and that's that our, our intellect, our emotions, and what our needs are. And so we want to be a better us. And what uh, digitalizing things does is that, first of all, it makes it faster, cheaper, and better fit. And what I mean by that is in terms of performance of you personally, uh, fit is that you still have to fit in physically in the world. Well, like if I want a module, I have something, a nice small box that'll fit in that won't be too heavy, which is a heck of a lot easier than shoving a human in there. Uh, and that's part of the world. Uh, and that's a big part of design. Ergonomically, does it fit together and is it easy to use? Now, the power of you is more than just you as a person. It's also you with other people, how you form networks. And what technology has allowed us to do is become wider, deeper, and faster. Wider, touch more people. Deeper, I know more about you. But most of all, what technology gives us is scale. And that's that we can uh, suddenly build to volumes we never had before. We can touch people that we never had before, and plus a big part of scale is speed. Uh, the semiconductor business to me is absolutely amazing, because never before in manufacturing history could we make billions of something in a year. And 
I'm sure if you went back to the 1800s and told them this is what's coming, they wouldn't believe you. So what are the digital technologies for digital transformation that define our age? Well, it's these wearable devices. It's our devices. And one thing I didn't, I don't think it's shown here is actually the cell phone uh, is one of the devices, the Internet of Things, uh, making smart uh, homes and systems, cybersecurity, the cloud, blockchain, and finally, all the cognitive technologies such as AI, machine learning, that's what ML is, big data, all of it. And this is how you digitally transform. Now, uh, what keeps improving in this area is computing power, storage, and network speed. They keep getting better and better. This leads to more efficiency. It leads to op operational excellence, meaning you get more throughput, you save money, uh, and it's more predictable. Why do we care about predictability? Because if it's predictable, we know what it's going to do. If we know what it's going to do, it's reliable. That's the thing. If you knew your car was going to break down every three years, but it would break down at clockwork, you knew exactly how much it cost, people could probably tolerate that. Uh, the big thing is, is it predictable? Actually, one thing people don't know is in the old an analog landline systems, uh, your calls got bumped one out of every 13. And it's like, why didn't everybody revolt against that? Well, they found out that people were able to tolerate that. The digital systems are much better than that. So when you talk about this, those technologies, what do they touch? They touch everything. I mean, there's nothing that doesn't have a digital influence uh, to them. And not only that, but we're talking about something on a global scale. And so when we talk about scale and the implications of it, when things get larger, it's like it's us, a division of the company, uh, an enterprise, which can have multiple divisions. And then you throw in your customers and you can touch the world. But not only can you touch the world, <laughs> we can go out into the universe. Uh, that's how far we could scale up. And do we go out into the universe? Yes, we do. They're called satellites. And we got a lot of them up there. And so, <coughs> excuse me, I'm recovering from terminal cold. Uh, operation. It can make us better. Our products can be unique, faster, and cheaper. In terms of marketing, we have greater insight that we've ever had into what customers want. And what this all turns out to be is that once it becomes mature and all, then you get into an ROI situation, meaning I can spend money and make money because I'm going to get a positive return on it. Now, all these pieces have to play together. If you can make them all come together, that's how you build powerful digital networks. And so the game is about integration. So you need to think about that when you're building this. So some of the insights into these... <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I apologize just once. Otherwise, I'm going to be doing it through this entire uh, uh, video. But when we look at the insights of the implications of this technology. What does it really mean? Well, low incremental cost, meaning, uh, actually, I kind of complained about this for online classes because they said, oh, if you bring a new online class and it costs this, I said, no, it doesn't. The incremental cost of an online class is close to zero. The main expense is paying the professor. I said, no, 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 we have a marketing and everything else. I said, so did you hire extra people to add on this capacity? No. And then I said, then it's not a cost because marketing and your marketing people are basically a fixed cost. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Uh, so incremental costs are really low. So the obvious thinking is if you can do something like that is, hey, we can make more profit. But this is the key to digital transformation. You have to take it beyond the obvious. You have to take it to a level that can be useful. And so if I can add volume that doesn't have higher cost, then I can offer features to any everyone. For example, a lot of companies sell 
uh, higher end features to just their you know richest or best customers well it's because those features cost a lot of money to produce but now because adding another person is just pennies you can start offering it to everyone it's always on well you think well gee I can make more profit because I could run more hours per day but what always on means the implication of it if it's always on then that means there's some place in the world you could be doing business 24 hours a day around the clock you've removed time as a barrier and so in international business that's a consideration cognitive capacity how much can we comprehend and think about because uh, well uh, if I can automate then that means I need less people and I don't have to pay as much but what it comes down to is that uh, this information allows you to know people better which means it's easier to sell to them and that's the crux of actually what Facebook is when you try to transform a business or something you can think of the curve as being actually like a chemistry curve meaning chemistry you have to put in a lot of energy to get something to take place and if you don't put in enough energy then it just slides back to what it was but if you do put enough energy in over you have to get past the activation and then you can become something new and unique uh, and that's actually uh, an organizational change that's why you have to put a lot of energy into it because it's just too easy for people to backslide so that activation energy actually gets pretty high so in the next video we're going to talk about why we should do this